What's up everyone, welcome to Blended and welcome back for those that have watched these videos before. Today's video is going to be the breakdown of my entry into Benny's Transformation Halloween Composition Contest. So what that means exactly is that this video is not going to be a step-by-step -step process, but a much speedier version. You will still get an idea of how I created this image and it'll just be a lot faster and a breakdown as to the composition in and of itself. So without further ado, let's just jump right into this and let's get started. All right, so I'm working with the 5,000 by 4,000 canvas size, and here's just a rough draft and a sketch of kind of what I wanted to do with this. I got some inspiration from the Stranger Things and the Upside Down, so that was kind of the motivation behind this piece in particular. All right, let's get started. Uh, let's drop in Benny here, and then next we're gonna drop in our main ground image, and of course we gotta scale this up so that way the size matches our main subject. Once we do that, I'm gonna use the pen tool here and just create a mask and a section of this. And then of course we need to bring back some of this definition in the background here, so let's do that. All right, I'm gonna follow that up with using a grass brush as well to clean up some of these edges. And that's just gonna get us started for right now, just a little foundation to build off of. Next, I wanna create a just a selection of these trees. Doesn't have to be entirely accurate, but doing my best to kind of match the shape of what I've drawn um, for our template that we're using for this composition here. So now that we've got that first one there, we're just gonna apply the same thing with everything else. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Perfect. From here, what I wanna do is drop in this sky. Now, from what I've seen from the other contestants, I've seen a lot of cooler colors, a lot of blues and darker tones, so I wanna do something a lot more warm. So I thought that this sky would actually be perfect for and set the tone, especially since I was kind of going with the that Stranger Things theme here. All right, so now that we've got that, let's just touch up this ground a little bit. I'm just using the same image as we did before for our ground and just try to make it look a little bit interesting here and add a little bit more rocks. I wasn't too happy with the original image on there, especially on the ground there. It just looked really pixelated, so just bringing in a lot more just foliage and rocks and everything to the background here just to kind of set up our foreground and we can just kind of build off of that, make it look a little bit more interesting here. So that's what we're doing right now. And of course, we got to blend this in and this rock just using some more uh, grass brushes to create that effect. Once more, finding a little bit more foliage to just introduce to the ground here. All right. So this tree and amongst other trees as well, are we're going to be using for our trees in the background. So you can see just using a pen tool to create a selection of that. And we're going to create a selection of this one as well. I'm just pressing Command J to make copies of those. And right now, I just want to do the best here to warp this in place to again just match the shape that we have you know i'm really trying to stick true uh to the form that i've created here and really go with that because i liked how the how it looked for us so we're just going to use multiple images to accomplish this feat here and then of course we just got to blend all of that together so that's what we're doing right now and this is looking pretty nice i'm happy with how the form especially is looking that's what it, my main goal and focus is as of right now so more or less, that is going to be the plan. And we're going to need to do the same thing with all the other trees. But let's fast forward that so that way we can just kind of keep moving along. So here we are, all the trees combined. Uh, that front left one there, I just used the combination of the two trees that I selected earlier on. And, you know, just kind of warped it in place to create something a little bit interesting. We're going to start introducing the people here that's going to be stuck to the trees. This here is just a 3D asset. And it's just a statue that I got from Envato Elements. I'm erasing the parts that we really don't need for this, but I thought it would be really cool to just have like these humans and figures uh, just trapped in these trees. And, you know, after all, the competition is in the contest is transformation. So that's kind of the idea that we're going for. And I'm just doing a little bit of color grading so that it matches the tones of our tree here. And then we're going to use this tree again um, and just create sections of this. So we're going to use this as texture. So just lower the opacity, warp this in place. Doesn't have to be really perfect, but more or less, we just want to match the contour of the body here, and we're just going to blend that in. Now, the trick here is to not go too crazy with it because you do not want to lose that definition and the integrity of the person itself. You, it, you want to be able to still see 
a lot of the definition like in the chest, the ribs, and all of those uh, parts of the body so that way we can tell from far away that there's a person here and it just doesn't look like a, you know, a deformation of the tree. So that's what we're doing here. Try to still preserve some of the definition. All right, so I'm just speeding through this as we continue just to wrap this up. But same process, just creating a little bit of sections of the tree. Try to pick and choose what I want and what I think would be interesting for the body parts that I'm working on. And then you can see there I'm just um, attaching it to that statue, creating a mask, and then uh, painting some of that back in. And yeah, so I really like that. I think this is really cool. It's sticking to my original concept. And now we need to do the same thing with this left tree here. I wanted to do something different, so I got a different statue. But we're going to repeat those same exact steps. So let's just kind of find a nice little spot for this statue here. Somewhere right about here I'm happy with. And uh, we're going to erase the parts that we do not need. All right, and then immediately go into our color grading to match the tree. Again, we're just repeating the same exact steps that we did for the statue on the right. And now that we got the color grading, now we can start the texturing process. Once more, just carefully selecting different parts of this tree that I think would be a good fit for the body part that I'm working on. And once we've got that, I'm just creating the mask and inverting it. And then we're painting this back in just using a soft round brush. I cannot stress enough that you do not want to go too overboard with this so that way you do not lose the definition of the body. We need to preserve that to make this look a lot more realistic. But you got the idea, so let's just skip over this and check out that end result here. Alright, we are looking good. I've also added the statues in the back as well. So let's focus on this background in a second. Let's really spruce this up. I'm using multiple solid color adjustment layers to really try to intensify uh, the warmth here. I want to add a little bit brighter tones and create a lot more glows. Uh, as well as the sky at the very top as well behind the clouds. We want to just have some of that light poking through. So this is just all about experimenting with different blend modes and try to create a little bit warmer effect overall. That's what we're doing here. And now I want to create a little bit of depth of field. So I'm going to use this solid color adjustment layer, clip it to the background. I'm not putting this in any blend mode, but we're going to drop the opacity on top of those trees just to help create that distance. And now that that's set, I want to start darkening up some of these elements. So we're going to start with the trees first, and then we're going to follow that up with the ground. All I'm doing is using a levels adjustment layer, dropping the highlights. And then while we're at it, we can create a little bit more atmospheric haze in the background as well for just some nice effect. Drop the opacity on that so it's not too, too overbearing. All right, friends, for this next part, just for the sake of time, I'm going to speed through it, but I will continue to talk through the process. I'm first going to start with this front left tree here and just drop it back a little bit and scale it down so that way we have a little bit more variety in our depth. I'm doing some initial color correcting within the branches themselves to make sure that everything is consistent before we move on. Once I've got that taken care of, I'm using this three asset from Envato Elements here just to create the ends of our branches. I love the that iconic spooky vibe it gives off of, so that's why I'm sticking with it. However, I like the original texture on the trees that I already had. So similar to what we did with the statues, just creating sections and um, copying that part off and going over these individual branches and adding that layer mask, inverting it, and then painting this back in so we have that texture. Something I want to point out here is in just a second, you're going to see me. I'm going to drop the saturation entirely on this tree here. As I'm adding all these pieces, we have a variety of tones, so we need to have one consistent tone throughout the tree. That's going to help us later on when we want to do some overall color grading adjustments. From here, we're just going to continue adding the texture, pinning on this tree, and then moving that over and doing the same thing on the right. So please continue to enjoy the process, and I'll be back with you shortly. Alright, at this point the trees are looking really good. I've added on some solid color adjustment layers here and what we're going to do with this is just create a little bit of darkening of the trees as well as we're going to use this to reinforce and exaggerate some of these physical features on the human bodies here that are trapped in the trees so that way it reads a little bit better 
once we're not so zoomed in on the picture. I'm mainly just worried about the two trees up front as they are the closest elements to us. I don't really care so much about the trees in the back. But this is that end result and I think the trees are looking pretty awesome at this point. And at this point I'm going to start introducing the vines that we're going to add on here. So we're just going to scale these up. Uh, again, once more they are some 3D assets that I got online here. And we just want to cover up the body in the tree here. And once I kind of found a good spot for them, uh, we can just hit enter, use the human saturation adjustment slider to match the tones of the tree in the background. So it'll be pretty desaturated and we can darken this up as well. And then once we got that, we can just kind of pick and choose what we want visible and the parts that we just want to erase. Overall, I thought these vines would be a nice accompaniment to the trees as well as just give them some more character. Uh, they're going to be a major theme throughout this piece here because you're going to see later on once we start adding these vines and wrapping around Benny here. So I did my best to really try to spread out the vines and make sure that the majority of the tree is covered. With the vines done, I'm now using Curves Adjustment Layer here just to give us a nice foundation to build off of for our future color grading process. From here, I also want to add a solid color adjustment layer on top of this as this is just going to be our shadows that we're going to use and paint some of this back in manually. So once I find a nice color here, I'm going to hit OK and then I'm going to invert that mask and paint this back in. Overall, I just wanted to darken up the front trees and create more contrast so that way it's a bit more impactful between our foreground and our bright background that we're going to create. Alright, this right tree is shipping up to look pretty good. I went ahead and just applied that to the left tree and now the two together, we've got a good foundation built up. So now we can start working off of that. And at this moment is when I started to create that light interaction with our background and our foreground element. So in order to accomplish this, I ended up using several solid color adjustment layers and put them in different blend modes. You know, you can really just experiment it and see what works best with you. I tend to use overlay quite frequently just because I really love the result of that. And all I do, uh, especially in this, I just found a nice saturated orange tone, inverted the mask. And as you can see here, just kind of painting this in and carefully choosing where I'm incorporating this. Obviously, the right side of this tree is going to have the most impact, the most contact with that light. So just bearing that in mind as I'm painting this throughout. And uh, once we've got this left tree taken care of, we're going to start painting the right tree. And I've already said it before, but in order to achieve this harmony of colors, I'm using several solid color adjustment layers to help build up this effect and give it some variety. Now, in order to add this next little bit of realism, what we're going to start doing is adding some rim lights here. Artists handle this in various ways. For me personally, I just like to use a solid color adjustment layer, use 100% opacity, and just painting just on the outside of these edges using a soft round brush and cleaning up some of the edges when necessary. So at this point, I thought this tree needed to get another overall highlight layer added onto this so yet again using another solid color adjustment layer put an overlay and then inverting the mask and just painting some of this back in primarily sticking to the right side of this tree as the light is going to be wrapped around from that main light source coming from the back right side of this composition and of course what i did to the tree on the right needed to do the same thing to the tree on the left so that's what you see me doing right now Alright, so the trees are looking pretty awesome at this point. I went ahead and just copied a lot of those color adjustment layers and added them to the roots. So here's that final effect of everything together. At this moment, I'm quite pleased with how everything's looking and thought it was time to start working on this foreground here. So, just like before, I'm going to speed through this because there's a lot involved with this process. And I'll continue to talk over this. But you're going to see me use a variety of different images and roots and just kind of experimenting with this. Unfortunately, uh, some of these roots that you see me first putting in place, they didn't make it to the end. They didn't make the cut. And I thought it would still be a good idea just to leave this in here just so you can see how my design changed uh, throughout the entire time creating this. So I thought that would still be a nice little fun uh, perspective here. But anyways, um, some of these did and you're going to see me here using this, this next section here. 
I'm not gonna lie, it took forever, and I hated every second of it. <laughs> this was probably my least favorite part of creating this entire image. It was a lot of experimenting, and you're gonna see that throughout this little section here. So just sit back, relax, enjoy this process, and I'll uh, interject with some commentary when needed. Alright, so somewhere around this point where I was just thinking, you know what, this is looking like a mess. It wasn't quite building up the way I wanted to. I wanted it to be more of a funnel and a cone shape from his arm. I added this branch in here hoping that would help. Ultimately, it does look really cool and I thought that was a nice transition into his arm, so I kept that. But ultimately scrapped a lot of this, went back to this original tree, and this is where I was like, you know what, this is the direction I want to go. I ended up preserving a lot of the original branches so that way I can still pull from that and, you know, didn't have to reselect all of these branches once more. But ultimately, I decided to stick with this and kept making copies of this tree, manipulating it to achieve the effect that I wanted. So once I felt like I was back on the right path, I took a step back and tried to rebuild this once more to get it to the look I ultimately desired. Alright guys, we've officially made it to the start of that transformation process and at this specific moment is when I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel and ultimately had hope for the rest of this piece. Okay, so at this moment I ended up creating a sketch for myself and a template to build off of just like what we did with the trees in the background. So I've already at this point had cut out tons and tons of branches to use for this and just like what we did with the trees you see here, I'm just warping these in place to try to match the sketch that I made for myself here. But because the process is all the same, you're just going to see me bouncing around here as I just start to eliminate one of these branches one at a time, trying to stay true to the initial template that I set out for myself. So besides the pen tool, it was really the puppet warp tool that was my best friend during this part here as it really allowed me to twist and bend these branches in a way that matched perfectly with the design that I created for myself at this part. And then from there, I just added some smaller vines to go along with these big roots to really intensify the overall effect here. Once all of that was in place, I went back to my ground and started focusing on that a little bit. I added a levels adjustment layer just to darken it up a little bit more than what it was and then I added a color balance adjustment layer on top of this to introduce some of those warmer tones that you see within our trees and our background. From that point, I repeated the steps that we did with the trees, adding a solid color adjustment layer, just something nice and saturated that matches our background, inverting that mask once it's in overlay, and then painting back in the areas that seemed fit. From this point on is when I really started focusing on the details. I first went ahead and used a grass brush to merge and blend these roots in with the ground, 
Next, I wanted to change the color of Benny's sweatshirt. I thought it was a bit too vibrant and a little bit too saturated, so I dropped the saturation, changed the hue a little bit, inverted that mask, and started painting this back in so we can get the new color revealed. And once I was satisfied with that, I moved on to shadows. I just used a levels adjustment layer and inverted that. And you can see me painting that back into all of these areas that where essentially there's any sort of connection with the roots and Benny. All right, and this is gonna be the result of that first initial round of shadows. Still lots to do, so I'm gonna go back to the speed version here as I finish off the roots. I'm now focusing on the larger highlights and shadows of these roots, so using a combination of levels and different solid color adjustment layers to achieve this effect. With the vines looking good at this point, I focus on some of the smaller details with Benny, so I'm starting out with the eyes here, and I've already cut them out and separated them to their own layer. First, I just scaled these down and placed them over the eyes accordingly just by simply lowering the opacity with that and just make sure that it kind of fits. Doing the same thing with the left eye as well. Once they were in, I've added a layer mask and painted these back in manually, but because they were so bright, I used the levels adjustment layer to knock down that brightness a little bit and then painted a little bit of shadow around the edges to add on to that creepy factor. From there, I added some veins. Um, you can't see it from far away, but I knew they were there and I wanted them there. So once I was satisfied with that is when I started adding the blood stemming from the eyes. And this is the really fun part. So I made sure I had uh, the pen pressure sensitivity when I'm doing this and just picked a dark color. When you're seeing this up close, I know it looks really rough, but we are not going to be zoomed in looking at this. We're going to be seeing this from far away, so just keep that in mind as you're watching this. So I'm being pretty loose with this, but at the same time, I'm making sure that it still looks believable. Switching up the colors a little bit, so we have a little bit of um, volume added on here. So I'm painting the lighter color just over the center of this. You're going to see me building up this effect. And once I've kind of got that in place, I'm going to add a brighter color just on top of this to really make the kind of like those highlights of the blood and the, and the accents on there. So again, I know it looks <laughs> it looks a little cheesy up close, but when you've seen it from far away and not zoomed in, it looks much better and a lot more impactful. So from far away, see, you can't really tell so much. Um, but I like the way it's looking um, and then at this point on what I did was just kind of created a little bit more Tiered trails or you know imprints of blood that's been left over there on the skin darkened up the eyes a little bit more as well And adding a little bit of little highlights within those eyelids too just to again just kind of sell this effect I then added on to this blood tear effect by using some of those smaller vines and adding these just kind of over the area of his face that I wanted to and then I put this into multiply blend mode as that would darken it up and again looks pretty believable from far away repeating those same steps of adding different colors to add the accents where they need to be. So here's the end result from that. At this point on I wanted to focus on trying to create the effect and the illusion that some of these vines are going into his skin and is underneath. So that's what I want to do now. I'm just sampling some of these colors on his face already so that way we can match the right tones. And honestly, it's all about lightness and darkness when creating this effect here. I'm doing the best I can here to try and freehand the shape of a vine going into his skin. And just like the eyes, we're not going to be looking at this so zoomed in and seeing all the imperfections. So that way when far away, it's believable and it really sells the effect. And at this point, I'm just darkening up some of the edges here just to create a little bit more depth to this. And then from this point on, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just going to be adding in the final effects and the final details of this composition. Thank you for sticking around if you've made it this far. But for the rest of this process, I'm going to speed through it. So please enjoy, sit back and relax, and I'll see you at the finish line.
after spending a couple more hours and really fine tuning some of these details here, this is the final look for this composition that I submitted for Benny's Transformation Contest. Overall, this piece received a lot of positive feedback, so thank you to each and every one of you that supported this image. I was really happy with the turnout of this, and obviously it's something very different than what I'm used to creating, and it was nice stepping outside of my comfort zone and trying something new. For those of you that made it to the finish line with me, thank you so much, and I really hope you enjoyed seeing this process. If you like seeing a different style like this from me, please let me know in the comments. Uh, until next video, please be safe everybody, and I hope to have you back here shortly. Have a good one.